All right, we are back with another episode of Monster Hunter Barovia. Uh, where we left off, the team made it through another uh, another trial through Van Richten's Tower, in which they found the legendary hunter himself and came across his apprentice Esmeralda. Uh, slight sp uh, sad backstory. Um, Van Richten, at this time, chooses not to join the party in their struggle against Strahd at this time, but should they restore Argenval's skull to his domain, he could be persuaded to join them otherwise. Um, the team enjoyed a long night's rest, and aside from that, we will uh, go from there. Um, well, actually, we'll start real quick. Um, Vika. Uh, as you get ready to gather your equipment and settle forward, uh, you end up fearing, ah, feeling a bit woozy, and you feel a straight, um, a slight thrumming in your head, as if something's calling out to you. This is, uh, like, when we are getting ready to leave? Yep. Does anyone else feel that? No. What are you? What, what are you talking about? There's something around. Something nearby. I I cannot explain. I I do not know. Uh. What exactly am I feeling? You're feeling a pressure going against your head, but it's not um, like the sword. It feels closer to, you know, someone trying to, or something trying to speak at, uh, with you. But I hear no sound? You hear a slight roar in, in your skull getting louder and louder. No one else hears that! No one! Um, yeah, no, I don't hear anything except the voices in my head. So, unless you are hearing the murmurings of a distant voice talking to you about recipes from beyond the realms, I, um, yeah, I don't think we're talking about the same thing. It's not a recipe, is is like there is something. Scream! Something roaring in my head. <sighs> Is it the sword? You said the sword was feeling at you before. It does feel, but never quite so loud. And finally, a voice, uh, a voice actually emanates from that roaring. You who restored my painting for thy commitment to restoring my skull to its proper resting place take some of my strength um I, I might have done something bad or good <laughs> um there is a voice talking about the painting from I, I guess the other place is talking about power. Well, power is a thing that we can use. Uh, what kind of power is it offering? <laughs> I, uh, I cannot quite tell. Do I sense anything from it? Eh, not this time, but it, it does leave some sort of residual effect, and you can feel something, something in the corner of your of your being that you know you can reach out and grab, but you're not sure what it is. There is something there, but I do not know what. It does feel warm and gentle to the touch, but you do feel as if it was strong, like like some sort of metal or metallic-like uh, strength to it. 
Are you sure you're not just going crazy, Vika? I don't think so. I do not know. This place is confusing. You're not going to, like, sprout tentacles, right? Yeah, that's already have awful. enough of that. I do not know how to respond to that. Yeah, that's Linden's thing. This does not feel like slimy tentacle. It feels like um something hard, metallic, mm. like metal of some kind. Perhaps it's some sort of weapon or blade. But maybe. I cannot say. Well, maybe you should uh, give it a shot. We've, uh... We should just be prepared for anything, I suppose. Alright. Alright, um... I've got my wreath pendant uh, of my leaky in my one hand and then my crossbow in the other. <sighs> All right, and uh, Vika takes a few steps back just in case uh, something goes wrong, and sort of focuses on whatever this is uh, deep within her. And uh, oh, I should have written out a description for this, <laughs> but I did not because I'm the worst. Um, a sort of, <laughs> a sort of freezing cold blast of air erupts around Vika as a pair of enormous metallic wings of silver emerge from her back and wrap around her body as a protective cover. The moment is that the cold air, the frigid air around her uh, embraces her in these sort of scaled wings. Vika lets out a terrified screech and starts trying to escape the the uh, the chill that has surrounded her. Okay, what the fuck is that? I I don't know what what. Is... Uh, is it back? Is it coming for me again? Uh, I, I don't think this is anything like uh, what you think it might be. But I can feel the cold. And it is here. I think this might have something to do with your... Uh, your favor from uh, that uh, silver dragon that we were... Uh, trying to help out. So, so there's wings spreading out of her back? Just temporarily. They sort of were not tangible and disappeared rapidly. Just for mm. a couple of seconds. That's not something you see every day. Um... Is not. It feels as though there is something else beneath whatever that was, something warmer and gentler. But I think. I think that I will put that on hold for the moment. I think I've had enough surprise. Vika's hands just keep running up her arms like. I mean, she has fur, so I mean, goosebumps are not so much a thing, but she definitely seems, um, perturbed. Well, it sounds like, the way you're describing it, that this is, uh, supposed to be helpful. It did feel, um, different, perhaps, than the cold from the frigid death. It felt, um, how do I say, um, protective? 
will not say go with that. Right. Um. Right. We we have a long day ahead. Um. We should we should um go to all the things that we need to do. And not think about scaly things in my back. Are they still there or are they just like no, they, they, they appeared and vanished very quickly. Okay. Yeah, let's just that's there's nothing to talk about there, I don't think. Is probably something that needs to be addressed, but not right now. I need processing time. For those concerned, <laughs> it is the feat that I took for the last level. Since we leveled to eight. So we can get feats that give us wings? That's incredible. It is the Gift of the Metallic Dragon. Uh, it was something from Fizzbands. Fizzbands. Anyway, so yeah. I just, uh, I thought I'd throw that out there for anyone who was curious. That was just the manifestation of the feat. It felt weird to not address it since it was something that I was taking. And it was like a, like, thing. Not gonna lie, I was contemplating that for the other campaign. <laughs> oh, good. We have a lot of dragon theme going on in the other campaign. Anyway. Yeah, yes. Van, Van Richten kind of gives you a once or is like, hmm, well, I see that you're not lacking for talent. Maybe you will succeed in your objective. I should start making preparations in the event you do succeed. It's probably a good idea. We also have a sword that shoots sunlight, so... It doesn't That'll be fun. just shoot sunlight. It um, sort of emits it constantly whenever drawn. See, it's very shiny, and I wave around my sword. Yeah, Van Richten kind of just pushes his glasses up. He's like, well, our chances are getting better by by the hour, it seems. We also have other ally. Um, the um, people from the vineyard promised assistance. He puts a hand to his chin and nods. He goes, well, better, better odds I've seen in quite a while. Esmeralda's kind of jaws agape. She's just kind of, she what she's just seen in the last minute. She's just kind of, you know, she kind of has one of those uh, crazy smiles that you know it's like, are you freaking joking me? Type of looks on her. Right. Okay. Um. So we should probably. Get going, yes. We do have long day yes. ahead of us. We should probably get going. All right, so to the church in Velaki, then, yeah. Yes. Velaki Church. All right. It doesn't take you more than a few hours to get back to the back to Velaki and get your way back to the church. You do notice on the way back that the road seems a little bit more uh, frigid as the cold air snaps at you as you walk by. But outside of that and some ruffling of leaves, just your, you know, casual forest walk through, you know, a haunted forest. Like you do. Yeah. But yeah, you guys make it back, you know, seems like last time that uh, you saw Velaki is... Pretty much what you see as you enter back in, no real uh, change in, no real change in its, you know, 
sunny disposition or you know it's a uh, societal changes whatsoever it seems like and uh there is no sign of half the town burned down from the last um misadventure that was just one building i'm pretty sure <laughs> exactly just making certain it did not spread no 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 just you know everyone's just kind of i don't uh, know if you ever tried to like actually light an entire town on fire or like douse one in unending paint but uh it's not that easy <laughs> It takes a few tries. I hear it's much easier to get the town overrun by uh, lizards of some kind. We don't talk about that. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> but yeah, you guys get back to the, the church probably, I would say, about mid-morning or so. Is the guy from last time here, the one that I paid to... Uh, very body. Oh yeah, he's kind of just hanging yeah. out on um, Milos or whatever. He, yeah, Milos, I think. Yeah, he's just doing his standard groundskeeping, you know, just cleaning up the, just kind of trimming hedges and you know making sure that you know rocks that are thrown get placed back at proper areas, trying to make the church as pleasant looking as possible. Milosh, it's good to see you doing well. We heard something bad about happenings here. Oh, nothing too insane. We've, you know, just the weekly attack by Strahd. And... What weekly attack by Strahd? Oh, you know, just a standard. He sends werewolves. We kill said werewolves. Mount heads on pikes and, you know, that's what we would just call the midweek. This is weekly occurrence? Ah, yes, and... He happened to uh, try to attack this church a little bit more, but, you know, whatever's going on here tended to ward off whatever things came this way. As you can see, uh, we got a couple of boulders that got to move, but outside of that, yeah, we aren't doing too bad. It's good. I'm glad we he... it safe. Who did he end up getting? Oh, poor butcher son. Guy was out. And got cornered by two werewolves and got separated from the rest of the guard. And, ah, uh, yeah, I mean, say we'll be having a weekly funeral ceremony for her, for the poor chap. Good gods. It's wonders that there remains anyone in village if this happens so often. Yeah, well, you know, all will be well, as we say around here. Yeah, you know, he just grabs a, you know, gets a sledgehammer out and breaks up one of the boulders on the ground in front of him and tries to break it down to smaller pieces. Fuck it. I will go and assist. Oh. I will head inside the, uh, the church to see how things are looking with, uh, with Ismark and Arena. Okay. That was the rest of your doing. I will go ahead and help as well. Uh, I'll go inside the church. Same. Okay. And parrots are heading into. Yeah, that's what I said. I thought did not come through. Oh no, no, you got cut off. Oh yeah, I'm going in the church. Yep. As you guys enter the church, you know, Ismark and Irina are kind of talking in hushed voices, though a little bit more, you know, urgency in there. And Irina just looks at you two, and sorry, looks at the group that enters, and you kind of see that she kind of cuts off what she's saying, you know. Father Lucian and Stella are just kind of, you know, counting, you know, just grabbing the local uh, books that they use for sermons and stuff and trying to figure out which one to use for the funeral ceremony this week. 
like, oh, well, hello there, folks. I uh, see you made it back into town. And all in one piece. That's good. That's good. Well, uh... Well, it's, it's good. Um, I heard that there was a Strahd attack while we were gone, so I wanted to check and make sure that my friends uh, who were kind of on his list are okay. He nods and says, like, well, thankfully, yes. Uh, seems like uh, Strahd's attack was a little bit more vicious, and he was a little bit more intent on attacking the church, but thankfully our our patron saint... And the Morning Lord provided us safe haven, and the worst we've got is just a couple of loose boulders in the in the in the surrounding area, and you know, a couple of broken windows, but nothing too serious. How did the boulders make it all the way out here? Oh, Strahd. Strahd's not known for sometimes his subtlety. Sometimes that man will anger get the best of him, and he just. Happens to Hoax rocks at churches. Well, boulders, rocks. I wouldn't fear so much, but the, you know, considering I almost lost the entire corner of my church, uh, it's not exactly something I I enjoy. Well, hopefully we'll be able to uh, do something about that. Uh, go ahead and make me a perception check. Okay. First roll of the night. Okay, that's a big ol' 12. Alright, yeah, you just kind of see that uh, Irina was trying to hide something into a sleeve of her, of her bracer. I will make a note of it. So everyone was fine with the straw attack. Nobody, like... They mentioned werewolves or things like that. No, nobody got like attacked by werewolves or anything in here, right? Oh, poor butcher's son. He got separated from the rest of the town guard and got mauled by a pack of werewolves before anyone could save him. They tore his throat out. Poor soul. Yes, yes, very sad. Anyway. But no, outside of that, it's been relatively quiet. I'm not asking for any particular reason, just, just you know, my sheer curiosity, but there haven't been any sort of, like, vengeful walking dead, like, up and around recently, have there? His eyes widen. He's like, oh, we, 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 we don't try to talk about, uh, try to talk about the, uh, up, the uplifting of the dead here. Uh, in fact, just, just last night, there was a sound coming from the cemetery and something burst forth and walks with a very ragged voice saying something about vengeance. Yeah, I was at least a little bit afraid of that. <laughs> what happened to it? Oh, it went into the general direction of uh, the old manor down in the southwest. Oh, rats. I guess it must have just missed us. Tommen's a hell of a thing. He kind of just raises an eyebrow and he goes, yes, it doesn't happen too often, but once in a while, the dead tend to rise out of the grave and we, we try our best just not to get in their way. It's probably a good uh, policy to have with that. Anyway. Well, uh, we appreciate your kindness and your hospitality. I would just love to have a private word with our friends who we uh, came here to see. He goes, oh, oh, feel free. I'm just going to take this into my study and try to figure out which which things to recite for that poor lad's uh, you know, eulogy. I'll, I'll be on my way and give you some privacy. Come, Stella. Come assist. So, uh, is Mark, Arena, how have things been here since, uh, you've been staying here? You know, Irina and Ismark just kind of look at you and look at each other and, you know, 
is Marcos. Well, I mean, it's a lot better than the attacks that we survived back in the town of Barovia. That counts for anything these days. You know, we didn't have to worry about an all-night siege. This one lasted, oh, maybe an hour or two at best. And, uh, nothing happened, and everybody's all right, and there's nothing that we need to be worried about, I say, like, while trying to make direct eye contact with Irina as much as possible. No, nothing at all. You can go and roll me a uh, insight check on that. I'd love to. That's all. Ten. Yeah, she's definitely hiding something from you. She's terrible at lying. We're, you know, we're your friends. We're here to make sure that we brought you here to protect you from Strahd. We are here trying to take care of Strahd to try and get this whole thing like to make it so that you don't get taken away in the middle of the night. If there's anything that we can do to help you, we're here to help. Is there anything we can do to help? She lets out a long sigh and um, retrieves the paper that was in her bracer, hands it over to you. And all Brad. it says on there is, my dear Arena, I think it's time for us to stop the courting and let's just proceed to, you know, what is fated to be and come to my castle and we'll get your wedding arrangements all in order. Forever yours, Count Ru Count Trot. So, is this what he does now? It's just like ties little notes to boulders and tries to huck them through girls' windows? Ismark kind of lets out a side life. He's like, ha! No, uh, in the midst of it all, a bat came in here, strapped to uh, his little... Uh, his feet and dropped it off. In fact, it was slightly adorable. It had a pink bow tied to it. I think I recall correctly, it also looked like it was slightly damaged from something. Not entirely sure what, but it looked like it was injured recently. I have absolutely no idea how that could have happened. <sighs> well, don't you fret. We are fairly soon going to be uh, paying a visit to him. They both look at you wide-eyed going, Are, do you have a death wish? No, I have a sword that shoots sunlight. Well, someone else does. Where is Vika? <laughs> From outside, you just hear like the sounds of like boulders being smashed to smithereens. Ah, uh, that explains things. Yep. They they kind of just look at you and it's like, you 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 can't go. That surely will just be the death of you. Yeah. Well, you know, we've been here long enough. It's only a matter of time before this was confrontation was going to happen, anyways. Irene kind of just. Looks a little bit more somber. She's like, maybe it's best if I just let him. And I mean, maybe I can plead with him to spare the, this land for at least a few years. <laughs> yes, that would. Uh, that no, that's a terrible idea. Um, though you know, my mind is demented enough that you might be, a, you know, bringing you there might be make an interesting distraction or at least draw him out. Though we're not really trying to draw him out, if I'm not mistaken. That's not the plan right now. Or maybe it is? Wink, wink. No. No, let's... We are... We have allies. We have... We have amassed resources since we first got here, and we are we are going to go and uh, 
get something that we think will help bolster the the people of this of our fair area and uh then we are going to march full force into his castle and see how he uh reacts to that Ismark kind of nods at you and puts a hand on his shoulder and he's like if you're after that that damn bastard whenever you're ready for your final strike I'll go with you I just can't stand by and let good men fight our fight Yeah, and you basically see uh, Ismark's face get a little bit more stern. In fact, you seem like as if he's sobering up a little bit. Well, uh, when we are in a place where we are going to be doing that, we uh, we will uh, let you know. Um. All right, is there anything else that we need to do while we're here in town? Are you asking that while still in the church talking to them? I'm asking uh, Parrot, Matilda, Lyndon. Okay. Um, at this point in time, I don't even understand why we're here, so I'm kind of just following along and shrugging. All right. Well, uh, if you need anything, let us know. Um, uh, but yeah, we're off to get what we can accomplished. And I'll head out. Okay. Hey, Vika, are you what? Where? Where did all the boulders go? Those were hardly boulders, just slightly larger rocks than usual. It really wasn't too horrible. Hardly even the workout. Honestly, disappointing. <laughs> well, um, Strahd seems intent on taking Arena um, for his Brad, um, so we should probably uh, mosey along on our uh, endeavors. Is there anything else you think that we uh, need to do while we're here? We were supposed to stop and visit Arabelle's father. I believe their camp is somewhere around here, yes? Rat had to go visit the Vistani. Was that around here, or was that the yeah. Serpil? Yeah. yeah, that's... that's uh, There was a Vistani camp here in Velaki as well. Alright, well, we will head... We will go and see if we can find the Vistani in or around Velaki. Okay, give me one second. I need to actually build this map real quick. I should just take a second. Map, new map. Uh, Vistani camp. Background black. Okay. <clears throat> and we need background. Okay. Do 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 do. Grid. All right, and then I'll just grab your guys' tokens from the church. Which map are we going to? Uh, it should be the Sun Camp. Oh, 
Wow, it's not even like telling me it's loading. Just a black screen. It's amazing. Well, should be. Eh. Map is only so important. We just need to find Arabelle's father and maybe see if someone wants to sell yeah. us some kind of potion. Oh, right. Unless we think someone else can tell us where the skull is here. Yeah, no, if we don't need to fight anything, then maps are... Oh, I'm seeing something. Whoa. It's a giant red question mark. It's kind of like what you put on the map the other day. That's it. Strahd has been replaced by the Riddler. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Our oh, tokens no. are even standing on it. Well, that's weird. Yeah, look at the stream, Sal. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's strange. I'm going to go to the tittle. See you guys later. Okay. Um, then, yeah, we will just, for you guys, we'll just do some theater of the mind, I guess. And So, yeah, you guys get back to the camp. And you notice, like, the Vastani camp in Serpool, this place is, you know, filled with a bunch of wagons and modular homes that seem like they're taken by a carriage. Lots of horses here. Uh, the woods part to... Oh, sorry. The woods part to reveal an expanse clearing, a small grass-covered hill with low houses built into the sides. Uh, fog obscures details, but you can see these buildings feature elegantly carved woodwork and have decorated lanterns hanging from their sculpted eaves. On top of the hill, above the fog, is a ring of barrel-topped wagons that surround a large tent with a column of smoke pouring through a hole in the top. The tent is brightly lit from within. Even at this distance, you can smell the odors of wine and horses that emanate from the central area. All right, well, I will uh, look for a person to uh, hail. Yeah, uh, you guys uh, end up coming across your old buddy, uh, Savid, kind of just hanging out and chatting with some other elves in the area. He looks at you, he's like, Oh, hello. You managed to make it back to camp without any problems. Well, yeah, um... That's good. I'm glad that you were able to f to find your way here uh, safely as well. Um, how is your lady friend faring? Oh, Arabelle, she's doing well. She ended up uh, making it back home. Her father was very thankful that he... His daughter was returned to him, and uh, he actually had commented on your guys' description, and we might have a slight issue, but uh, it should be fine. Is that a slight issue? Well, remember how we met at that place back in Argen Valshold? Yes. And do you recall interacting with a Vistani who... I don't know, uh, was chasing a horse thief? Yes, we um, assisted in the return of the stolen horse. Well, Please tell me they went to her, her family. Yeah. Yeah, that actually is the case. I see. Now, good news is, our girl, the gentleman that you met and you know, scared away with that uh, that fiery primate it was not her father. It's actually the... Her father's actually the leader of this camp named the Vosh. I kind of grinned to myself. <laughs> he... he... <laughs> Just just be careful with dealing with uh, Argal. He's still pretty fiery about the fact that uh, you uh, kind of intimidated him and his crew away. It didn't look good when they came back to camp empty-handed. Empty-handed? They had horses. Uh, 
Yeah, well, that wasn't what they were after, but... Oh, well, I... Luvash is actually overjoyed to know that his daughter made it back uh, alive, and and he's willing to, uh, you know, actually repay that debt, surprisingly. So, whenever you're ready, uh, I will take you to him. All right, well, let's go. Let's get this. Let's rip this band-aid off. Yeah. Uh, as you guys proceed through the camp, you can easily, you know, make eye contact with quite a few of the Vistani here. Some, you know, with curiosity. Others who kind of stare daggers, you know, through you, knowing that you know some of them aren't too friendly. And as you make it to the big camp, you hear a bolsterous laugh, uh, and you hear a tale about a gal who ended up having a giant fish you know, come her way, and only for the fail, and her dad just kind of lets out a bowling laugh. And she goes, oh, and look, it's them! And she points at you guys as you guys approach the uh, main tent. And then, uh, and, yep, go ahead. Arabelle, um, well, it's nice to see that you're, uh, Doing well for yourself now. Yeah, these guys are the ones who rescued me, and you know the the man. What are you, ma'am? Are you a minotaur? Or are you a bull? I, I, I'm not quite sure. I'm not too well caught up on my things. <laughs> a bull is the male form of the cow, and I am neither. I am minotaur. Yes. See, told you there's minotaurs here. Dad didn't believe me. It does seem as though there are not many of us in these parts. Luvash kind of strokes his beard like, Yeah, that's true. I don't think I've actually seen a man in quite a few years. It's pleasure to meet you, sir. Vika Asterian at your service. And I give him a sort of sweeping bow. He he turns his head like, uh, uh, thank you again for for saving my daughter's life. I was beside myself and quite distraught. I, I couldn't even keep the camp in proper order. Well, what are your? Well, we're glad to. Uh... To help to make sure that your you and yours are not uh, in any more danger, is there? Um, what are your? Because there was a bit of concern about you and your uh, your ilk and their feelings towards Strahd himself. How are you guys? Well, frankly, aligned at this point. Luvash and Argo look at each other and kind of grimace. He's like. Look, we we kind of owe Strahd a little bit here and there, and when he asks for a favor, we try to we try to make sure that we don't go too out of the way for him. But you see, he kind of lets us come and go as you please, and he prevents the werewolves and other dark creatures from attacking us if we do him a favor every so often. One night, one of his uh, well, I guess someone of his employee came over asking for that gal, and since we didn't know her or anything about it, we thought it was we thought it was going to be a simple job. So we thought we would just tie her up and give it over and keep the peace here in the camp. Got a lot of people to look over. I see. So we were looking for some level of assistance in our dealing with Strahd and I'll just be honest um, do you think that you and your uh, your fine people here would be of any assistance to us in that endeavor or should we look elsewhere well well, look sir I, I'm, I'm going to be quite frank with you I, I'm in your debt for saving my, my daughter and and nothing can replace that, but 
I, I don't want to trade the life of my camp for for a bunch of folks as well, but let me do this for you. If Strahd is a man of hospitality, and if you invoke the right of a host of hospitality, and as long as you don't cross him, he he'll probably allow you to go through unharmed for the most part. Just gotta abide by those rules and it should be fine. It's something that we Vistani use to go in and out in most of the time. Well, I would say 9 out of 10 times we don't have any problems when we have to go over there and talk jobs. Something that most people here don't know and don't care to know, but it's at least something I can do to ensure at least some safe passage through his, his domain. Interesting. So even with, uh, even though we are going into his domain to look for relics of power that we might be able to use against him, he would still be gracious enough if we invoked the right of hospitality. Indeed. Strahd, Strahd is a man whose ego is that of, uh, of a lord still in he still enjoys the uh, the idea of entertaining goat guests in his home. That is very good to know. Um, if we were looking for some sort of um, object from very long ago, uh. Do you think you might be able to assist us in uh, figuring out where it might be? He scratches his head. Well, I, I haven't gone through most of his home. I've, I've been only fine to the main floor, but uh, what are you trying to look for? A, um, a skull of a very large creature. A, um, a silver dragon that died a very long time ago. He kind of, his eyes wide, it's like, Aga invokes Skull? I thought that was a myth. It is not. We are not 100% certain. It is in the castle, but it sort of seems that, that is likely. Hmm. One of the, one of the Vistani talked about something like that a while ago. It says something down in down in something called the Hall of Bones, I think. I think that's what they, the area called itself. That sounds like a. Uh, that does job with our information we have. And this is in the castle. Yes, I. I don't know where it is exactly, but. I have a feeling that if you're going to look for something like that, it'd probably be in that place. On the map you gave us, uh, are there any names listed on it? Uh, not on the main floor. No, it's just a kind of just a floor map of everything. There's nothing really labeled on it. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. At least knowing that it is likely there is of great assistance. He, he just nods. He's like, remember, just act like proper hosts and, or sorry, proper guests and invoke the right of hospitality when you find them there. And as long as you don't overstay your welcome, shouldn't be any real harm coming your way. Oh, and by the way, he uh, claps his hand, and there's a he hands over a pouch for you, and inside contains, you know, three healing potions. Hey. That is very helpful. Thank you. He nods his head. It's like. Unfortunately, I, I don't dare to offer him more assistance. I, I fear that even now I might be offering too much help, but you did save my daughter's life. 
well, your your hospitality and your graciousness is appreciated. And we thank you for the information as well. He nods his head and he's like, hopefully the morning lord looks over your whole souls. Every time I walk in, though, I feel a little bit of me, you know, gets eaten away. It's not a place for the for anyone, really, at least of the living. Yeah. Well. So. We should probably check with the, uh, Pistani at the Sarah pool. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, then to see if uh they have more information because he said that the one lady had something. Yeah. Yeah, if you wanted to go talk with Madame Eva. Okay, like she might be able to guide us to the hall or like tell us where the Hall of Bones is. She said she was the one who knew about the Hall of Bones. So. Yeah. 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 Trying to get familiar with that. All right, so yeah, there's nothing else here. Uh, actually, what the, where the heck are you guys going? Uh, Sarah Pool from Vallaki. I don't think that was that too long of a walk, correct? I think it was a day or two. Yeah, let's check here. I do remember us camping out at some point in the middle of the hood. Oh God, yeah, that was at least a day. I'm I'm counting. Yeah, yeah, that's that's quite a bit of a walk. Yeah, it's at least gonna be a day or two. Uh, let's count the hexes real quick. About forty-five hexes. So about a fourth of a mile. That's about eight miles. Oh. Yeah. Probably take you at least the rest of today, sleep, and then get there midday tomorrow. So yeah, if you guys want to make the trip to Sarah Pool, we can certainly do that. Okay. So we are taking a long rest in the middle. Yeah, because I'm I'm thinking it's probably gonna be eight to eight to nine miles because you guys have to go through the forest, get through the clearing, and then if any encounters happen. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, we actually haven't had just a random encounter in a while, have we? Nope. 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 Alrighty, uh, anything else in Velaki before you guys make on your merry way? I think that was it. I think it might be time for us to catch up with some of those, uh, those ghoulies that were missing. Yeah. Uh, not if they catch up with us first. <laughs> what? They only are swearing eternal vengeance. What's wrong with that? Uh, they know we're all in Argonvos hold, so they're probably, you know, after I mean, us being there. I mean, isn't... They'll go away if we put the skull back in Argonvos hold, right? Here's hoping. Right. <laughs> We're just we're just believing in the cursed and the anyways. The Hall of Bones doesn't sound like a trap at all. Do you, where, where's the part where you missed that the castle Ravenloft with the invitation that is open to us to come in at any time? The whole place is a trap. In fairness, if if what Lavosh said is true, and Strad does hold to the laws of hospitality, then by inviting us in to his yeah. home, we are safe and protected so long as we abide by them. He did send us an invitation. It is just a question of uh, whether we abide by the rules and if Strad does himself. As guests, we would be safe from any of his machinations. But in turn, we would need to be gracious guests. Right. We being gracious guests. 
to the be... first time and the first time he tortures someone in front of us that, that's really not going to last too long this is true it the great fear i have is that he will try to use our friends that he kidnapped against us because if we take action against him and it's after seeing him do something to them we will break the rules first we will just have to not we're not here for that we are here for the skull once we get the skull in place then we go all in well, once we get the skull, we gather our allies. We have many that we need to gather. It's Mark and and um, Van Richten and the Crows. Yes. But we need to... We need to get what we need out of there first. Yes. So let's focus on that. Our goal is not to intimidate, not to engage, to be gracious guests and get what we're in, get what we're in there after, out of there, and get the fuck out. I'm so sorry. Did you just have a stroke? A little bit. <laughs> Probably fine. But get in, get our shit, get out. So, anything else here? You guys wanted to go to... Let's go to Force Path map, and we'll see what random encounters we get. I'm excited. I don't fucking know about you. It's gonna be a great time. Alright, so go ahead and range yourself on one side of the map or the other. Probably, well, I guess on this side of the map, since you guys will be going that way. Heading, heading eastward. I'm assuming you mean on the forest path map? Yeah. How's it that map goes more? I feel like I use more assets for that map. Oh well. No, I think this is about right. It was a pretty simple map. Didn't need to be super complicated. Yeah. see Matilda and Parrot just need to get into formation and roll up a random encounter. Alright, so it's during the daytime. Alright, let's see what happens. Oh! Right back. I don't like how the DM is laughing, guys. It's probably fine. DM laughs are never fun. Alright, uh, Vika, you're up front? Yes. Alright, I need you to make me a uh, survival check, please. Survival? Yup. Oh boy. I say, if you want, oh. I can there and help you. Well, that's not so bad. 16. Okay. Yeah, it is. You're plotting through. You make note that there is a hunting trap on the uh, road ahead of you. Oh. We've seen these before. It did not go well, then. Um... Quinn just stepped away, and, uh... So I, uh, he is going to disarm the trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I was laughing. I'm like, oh, come on. The moment he walks away, I roll a hunting trap. 
Oh shit. Okay, well let me uh let me uh do something about that. Can I use my thieves tools to disarm it? Yeah, go ahead. It's a natural twenty for a twenty nine. Oh boy. Yeah, you're just like, oh, yeah, that was the model from last year or the year before. Super easy. All right, hunting trap acquired. So that's a second hunting trap that you have. No, I think you used one, didn't you? I think I did at one point. All right, I have a hunting trap now, so we're fine. Okay. All right, so that takes care of the random event in the afternoon and nighttime. All right, go and set up your watch. I'll take first. I'll be on first as well. And then I will take uh, second. Quinn will as well. Third. All right, and group can go ahead and give someone assist to give someone a stealth advantage roll. Stealth? Yeah. For yeah. every single one? Yeah, so that way I can try to see if an encounter will pop up. So you want to stall the stealth roll, or just... Or you can give the person with the highest stealth advantage, whatever you guys want to do if you want to... I think that's Linden. I have a Linden plus six, but Linden. I have a nine. Y'all could let me roll it. I have a nine. Now? I'll roll with advantage. <laughs> it's a seven and a two. Sixteen. Okay. Alrighty. Well, let me see what I roll for a encounter and see if uh, that's gonna be good enough to spot you guys. Oh. I'm not sure I like that sound. Actually, okay. So who's on the second watch? Uh, Vika and Quinn. Vika and Quinn. All right. So... All right, so uh, you two can go ahead and uh, roll me a perception check. Uh, he stepped away for a second, so I'm going to roll for him, too. Okay. Oh, and he came running back over. <laughs> he got a 21, I got a 19. All right, so about 20 feet from your location, you see a body drop from the sky and with a resounding thud, hits the ground hard. Wait, we hear a thud? Oh no, you, you see a body drop oh, from the okay. sky and you hear it hit the ground with a resounding thud. Okay. Let the bodies hit the floor. Okay, I regret saying that. <laughs> I I hate myself for no, that. No, you don't. I do. I, I hate don't. myself for that. No, you don't. Well, for one, there's nothing wrong with her. Oh my god. You had to, like, run back from the other room just to say that. <laughs> Alright, well, then, um, crossbow in hand, I am going to, uh, do my crimson right. Oh, good. Maximum damage to myself. That's fine. I'm going to wake the others up. And I'm going to go and examine this body falling from the sky. Oh, goody. Everyone's going. All right. Everyone, it's uh, time to wake up. Uh, it's raining, man. 
That one, I don't regret. <laughs> I will. All right. Well, I groan and follow. Groovy. All right. So as you guys approach the body, let's see what happens. All right. I back. will also mutter my blessing to Maliki uh, while holding my wreath in my hand and uh, bless my crossbow with it. All right, as you guys approach the body, you see it as the body of a minotaur. Of which oh. has been stripped of armor, weapons, and any valuables. In fact, it looks pretty much identical to Vika. Vika, why the fuck are you falling from the sky again? Do we notice anything else going on around us? Nope. I don't see anything, sense anything. Nope. I don't think we're as invited to the house as that man said we were. It feels a lot like the um, vanishing uh, tombstone? Grave? Whatever that was? Can I examine the body and see if I can find anything? Like, yeah. with it? I will do so then. Okay. So the moment that you uh, touch the body, you start seeing it decompose very quickly. In fact, it, you kind of see that the uh, fur kind of dissolves along with the muscle and other tissues, leaving just skeletal remains. That's all that's left. Just a skeleton of a minotaur. Lucy, is there anything uh, odd about this skeleton down here? I will go ahead and take a look at the skeleton, make sure that it's just, you know, regular skeleton. <laughs> sure, go ahead and uh, you check in for it medically, magically, what are you doing? I'll do it medically. Okay, yeah, go ahead and do me a medicine check. That's a nine. I'm very tired. I was dead asleep. Yeah, aside from a large, you know, fracture on the skull from what seemed to be a, you know, bludgeoning type of weapon, the rest of the body, uh, sorry, the rest of the skeleton looks pretty fairly well intact. Don't you have some sort of, like, ability to look at these things? Some sort of eyes, or some sort of, um, burial place. Um, I... I will go ahead and cast Eyes of the Grave. Thanks. Very, very hesitantly, and I make very sure not to look at myself as I'm looking at the skeleton and looking around to see if there's anything undead within 60 feet. Nope. You don't see anything, you know, as long as you're focusing on everything else outside of yourself. No, you don't see anything else that would be undead. No, everything's normal. How this guy right. died was that it was hit by the head, or in the head, by something. Possibly the ground. Potentially the ground. But yeah, Vika's right. It feels like the, uh, the gravestone thing all over again. Somebody's just fucking with us, so... Probably. Yeah, I'm yeah. just going to kind of look like this is really all I got up for. I'm really tired, and I'm going to go back to bed. <laughs> this yeah, time, I'm going to, like, shoot into my ring and leave it at the campsite. <laughs> all right. Yep. It's hard to wake everyone for, you know, just Vika's body double falling from the sky. Are you okay, Vika? 
Oh, yeah, great. I have gold shimmering silver wings coming out of my back and bodies of myself falling from the sky. How could that not be great? <laughs> I'll pat her arm. Just don't think too hard about it right now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, nothing else happens for the remainder of the evening, and you guys get a long rest in. Yeah. All right. And then we'll roll one more random encounter for the morning walk to Sarah Pool. Alrighty, um, all of you guys can go ahead and make me a uh, perception roll, and the highest one wins. Not mine, it won't. Why are these dice so hot and cold? Did I do it? Did I win D&D? <laughs> Jesus Christ. We just wasted all of our natural 20s on this. No, I wasted a natural one, so there's that. <laughs> I rolled a nine. Well, Vika and I both rolled 25s. Oh. With natural 20s. Is that the highest? Two 25s? Yeah, they're two 25s and a 19. All right. Uh, the two 25s roll one more time. Suck it, nerd. <laughs> I win whatever this is, which is probably getting your eyes gouged out by something. Alright, go ahead and roll me percentile. Ooh, that's fun. You're gonna turn yourself into a sheep, aren't you? That is an 87. Hey, look. All right. A blue sheep. With a feather beard. So, Quinn, as you're walking on the road, you see, just off to the side, a old little doll made from a dark, dense wood missing a hand and a foot. <sighs> it's always something around here, isn't it? There is a doll off to the side. It's missing a head and a foot. Oh, that's a vivid imagination you have there, Quinn. Does it look like the doll I use for my weapon? No, it's a little bit more, oh, uh, a little bit more rough. With uh, looks rougher than what you're accustomed to using, and a little bit smaller too. Uh, I was going to ask, does it look like? Doesn't Quinn have like? His... Yeah kid's doll. doll. No, I have the doll that I took from the kids from the death house. That's what it was. Ah. Yeah, it looks similar to that one. Oh, good. Uh, well, I'm falling for it, so let me go over and examine the doll. The doll of death. Yeah, I mean, aside from a small um, changes here and there with the um, type of clothing it wears. It looks like it's about the same. <clears throat> looks like it was crafted kind of with similar hands. Probably from a doll maker or something similar. Uh, someone in a similar profession. It has some professional quality to it, but definitely not one of the uh, high-end stuff that you would see in one of the major towns. Alright, well. Warily, I will take it. Okay. All right, yeah, that's all the random encounters. And you guys make it to Sarah Pool. 
actually need to make that okay. visible for you guys since we haven't used this in a while. Player visible. There we go. Oh, look, there's Dr. Etrix. Yeah, that's how long it's been since we've been here. I'll just delete these out. I should be able to copy and paste. That's a little way. sad. Oh, no. I guess I do need to go back and get you guys. Alright, Force Path. Do, 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 do. Phenomena. Phenomena. Alright. <laughs> All right, yeah, you guys make it back to the pool, and it seems like it's in the similar state that you guys left it in the last time. All right, so have quick chat with Madam Eva, and then we got on our way. Yep, sounds like a plan. All right. So we go and find Madam Eva. So yeah, you know, the camp just gives you nods. They seem to recognize you well enough. And you see Madam Eva's tent in the back. She goes, ah, good. You seem to survive quite well here. Oh, but it looks like you lost two and gained one. The cards did not foretell that. Well, it's actually one of the reasons why we're here is about the cards. Um, we were looking for a thing in the Hall of Bones in Castle Ravenloft. When we first came here, you mentioned place of walls of bones and chandelier of bones and table of bones. And we were wondering if this was that place, this Hall of Bones. Ah, yes. Castle Ravenloft holds many unique areas, and the Hall of Bones is one such place. I didn't direct you there immediately, thinking that I would send your dust too quickly, but perhaps now's the right time to do so. To send us to our deaths. <laughs> Amazing. That's Sunny, you don't have confidence in yourself? I mean, Mm, yes, I, I do see that the devil himself gave you a bit of a roughing one point. Yes, well, there are powers above that are watching over me now. Also, my tall friend over here has a sword that shoots sunlight, so... You go around, like, talking about that a lot. I sort of wonder if perhaps we should... Brag about that less. <laughs> Probably. I mean, Quinn, I mean, Quinn's just jealous because he wishes he could shoot sunbeams out of his eyes or something like that. Uh, that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you found the sun sword. Quite good. I haven't had anyone find that relic in well over a hundred years. Funny enough, it was found in chest with corpse that was probably under 80 years old. Oh. Oh, poor Sergei. That, that sword shone so brightly according to the history that we've told over the years. The sword kind of just kind of hums at the kind of hums in mourning when it, it hears the name Sergei. The sword seems to recognize that name. Yes, the oral tradition passed down by the Vastani showed that that sword was once possessed by Strahd's brother, Sergei von Zarovich. 
that Strahd's <coughs> brother? Yes. Yeah, Strahd... Strahd's family is, uh... Well, let's just say his tale has quite a bit of things going on with it regarding his brother, his lover, and even his parents. Hopefully you can find the lost history of this town and might might grant you a boon. Where might we find the lost history? The cards. In the castle? The, card. the cards, Sonny. In the cards? Do we have to believe in the heart of the cards first to find out this information? Get out. <laughs> she kind of chuckles like, whether you believe in them or not, that's what fate has decided for you, young lady, and... Oh, poor, poor girl. How long will you live in denial? I am denying nothing, and I'm just going to walk out of the tent. They can go ahead and have this conversation. <laughs> I am not in denial about anything, and now I will leave. So, where might we, we find the Hall of Bones in the castle? Oh... If I had to take a guess, probably in the larders. Larders, okay. Is that <laughs> going to be on like the ground floor? Might be like under underground. Probably close. To, well, let me think here. My memory isn't so great, but I I remember something about servants and guards, and even the chamberlain. You can find out where those are, you might be able to pin down the hollow bones. Yeah, something about the servants, the wine cellar, the guards, and the chamberlains. If you can figure out where they yeah. are located, you probably will find the hollow bones in that area. All right. All right, so we'll uh, the guards, the chamberlain, and the uh, <laughs> wine cellars. She nods her head. All right, and what was this about a boon in the cards for the secret of the uh, town? She looks at you with a with a kind of piercing eye. She's like. Um, don't be too hasty when you find Argon Vault's head there. You also should be looking for something I gave you information about on your first trip. That's true. You did say there was something in a hull of bones. The information, right, on first drop? <laughs> she nods her head. All right, well... We shall be thorough then. She nods. She, she, she nods, and as you guys get ready to part, she goes, <clears throat> Remember, you don't have to kill him on your first trip there. Oh, it is not our intention. Remember we that. We plan to be Remember the most. That. We plan to be the most gracious of guests. All right. Anything else you wish to do at the camp? I don't think so. Okay. So off to Ravenloft, huh? That is the plan. Oh, friendo. Yep. Oh, we also got those three healing potions. Who does not have a healing potion? Uh... Hmm. 
I do not. So, Wonder Quinn, I was going to keep one because I am out. I think I still have one. Um, I still have mine. I have one. I do not. And so that's three people. One me, one to Quinn, and uh, yes, and one to Lucy. Was it just a regular healing potion? Yeah, just regular one. Okie doke. Right. So, to the castle. To the castle, and... Wada! Scene change. Dun dun dun. Alright. Castle Ravenloft. Alright, as the characters get near the castle, the weather worsens. Dismal rain starts to fall, becoming a torrent within the hour. Lightning routinely strikes the sky, falling by peals of thunder that make the castle shudder. Thick, cold fog swirls in this courtyard. Sporadic flashes of lightning glance through weeping clouds overhead as the thunder shakes the ground. Through the drizzle, you see torches flaming fluttering on each side of the castle's keep. Warm light spills out of the entrance, flooding the courtyard. High above the entrance is a round window with shards of broken glass lodged in its iron frame. All right. Well, this All right. is uh, ominous looking. Yep, and I'm just trying to make sure. So yeah, to give you some scale here, I believe this is saying that the uh, top of the main tower of Ravenloft stands at 360 feet tall. Oh my gosh. Yep, and okay. the walls stand as high as 90 feet, and the towers on top of the walls stand at 140. So, oh boy. So, yep, this is a big boy. Where's my token at? Uh, it's on... Yeah, we have to rely on on Queen and Mika. They're a little bit more intuitive with that. So it looks like each character has also been assigned a color. If you're looking at it from top down, you should be able to see the color you were assigned. Yeah, I recolored them once we all chose our colors. Yep, so the character's full portraits are actually on display for the most part for the ones I did have I was looking at the back of the castle. Ha ha ha. Ah, yes. All right. All right, so we are at the wall of Ravenloft. <laughs> I don't know, and I just. I'm dead. Right, right. Yep, so... That's... Well, um... What's the plan here? Are we, uh... Are we going in through the front door? Unless you say. move other way in. We're technically in the area looking for something, and the weather has gotten past the point where I would feel comfortable camping out. I mean, for fuck's sake, some of the rain is sideways. Well, um, we also are, uh, invited, so. Yes, it's, it's, um, well, all right, I guess we're just not sneaking in here then. Which is, you know, 
that's fine, I suppose. We can always sneak back in later, you know. He's not expecting yes. us. He's clearly yeah. expecting us right now. I mean, he could just see us out here talking. Also, Should we have we, dressed nicer? We did sort of announce that we were coming here to all the Vistoni in the entire region. Twice. Twice. And also warns them that we have sword made of sunlight. <laughs> yeah, Lucy. Excuse me, I'm not word vomiting. Is there any chance that as you said that, you held it up in front of the castle and screamed it? That would be really metal. No, I know better than that. I am not going to break a rule of hospitality before we step foot over threshold. Well, who wants to knock on the door? All right, well, please don't, is be the door please don't be me, please don't be me, please don't be me. I will... I'll do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there was the like an invisible later. wall there. All there right. we go. Fuck it, I'm gonna walk up there too. <laughs> anyway. Alright, so I knock on the door. Yeah, I mean, it slowly creaks open and it lets you in. Alright, let's uh, step into the, uh, the courtyard, I suppose. Alright, as you guys walk through, the rain picking, uh, picks up more and you guys start seeing that thunder and lightning crash a bit more and the rain gets worse. Yep, and as you guys enter, you see in front of you a door that leads into the castle proper. The ornate outer doors of the castle hang open, flanked by fl uh, fluttering torches and iron sconces. 20 feet inside the castle is a second set of doors. So the front door is open. Yup. All right, do I see anything or any body or creatures on the inside? Nope, it's eerily silent. Eerily silent. Okay, well, um... I'll go up and knock on the front door. Yeah, you just notice that the door is open and look like it's inviting anyone in. I'll knock and just poke my head through. Yeah. As you do so, you just, you know, treat it with silence. Hello? All right. Oh, if it's open, I think we're invited. Okay. All right. As you approach the second set of doors, on the interior, they swing open, revealing a grand hall filled with the sound of organ music. So they swing inwards? Yep. Yep, 
Yep, and got organ music. I'm just hearing Jakarta and Fugue in D minor in my head. <laughs> All right, well, um, it appears that we are being invited in further. Uh, is there no, uh, no thing or nobody in this grand hall? All right, uh, go and roll me a perception check. <clears throat> Anyone who steps in? Yep. 18. Uh... So just my, like, my perception check, guys, I just realized I've been playing this entire time without having my shield equipped. Um, Brilla says what now? <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, so whoever entered, make that perception check. And then anyone with a 10 or higher, you notice that there are four, uh, <clears throat> four statues um, that are hanging on some of the pillars in here, looking down at you menacingly. What do they look like? They look like dragon wormlings. Interesting. Any notable color or just no, just like your stone. Okay. Yeah, just stone gray. All right. So my psychic link is up with Quinn, Vika, and um, um, our bird uh, parrot again. Nice. They keep dropping me on this model. It's incredible. Are we having fun yet? Jeez, funny Christmas. I can delete the doors if they'll make it easier. <laughs> on them to swing open. All right. Now, okay. Um, so psychically, so what's the plan here? Are we trying to find this hall? Yes, we need to go from sounds of things somewhere down. Hall of Bones, where uh, something about the Chamberlain, the soldiers, and the uh, wine cellar. So, wine cellar makes me think that it would be below ground. Well, do you want she me said, to? Yes, the larder. Do you want me to lurk around and see if I can find a way down? Well, let's not get too, like, far from each other. Aren't we all guess at this point? If we're sneaking around, wouldn't that be breaking that? Well, our gracious host is not. Uh, made themselves known. They've made it known that we are basically expected, but we are not greeted. So, <clears throat> You hear a booming voice as you say that. You hear a booming voice echo through the hall. Welcome, hunters. Please enjoy your stay. Please do not fear. I have no intentions of harming you at this moment, as long as you refrain from venturing outside the main floor. Please enjoy a meal in the dining hall, and some music, and take in the looks of my statues in my chapel as well. Be welcome, but do not break the rule of leaving the first floor. Oh, well, there goes that plan. Well, give us the opportunity to explore. So we should be safe so long as we do not leave first floor. Right, because we believe him. That's right. If he does not show us the hospitality. Right 
he loses his power over us in this place if he is the one who breaks the rule of hospitality, so. Oh. So that was Faye. I don't know. You know I know a lot about vampires, so it's, uh... <laughs> Where is Dr. Itrex when we need him? Alright, so... So... Uh... Besides, if we break the rule of hospitality, we'll just kill everything. Um, we should not probably plot to break rules and... Um, murder? Well, we are invited for the moment, at least. True. We doesn't seem very hospitable. Alright, so... Other than the oh, wormling statues... Around. Yeah, other than the wormling statues, what else we got going on around here? Alright, where are parrots going? Uh, you see, torchlight flutters against the walls in this vaulted hall. To the east, an arched hallway stretches for 20 feet, ending at a spiral staircase that goes up and down. Next to the hallway, a suit of armor, oiled and glistening, stands at attention in a shallow alcove. To the west, large double doors hang slightly open, and a steady bright light escapes through the opening. Swells of organ music come from behind the doors, spilling their melody of power and defeat into the hall. Can I see right. into the room over here? Or is the door shut? Oh yeah, I mean, there's the doors are shut, but there's enough. Uh, no, you yeah. said there was yeah. it was slightly ajar, right? Yeah. Well, I'm under the premise that this is okay for the time being, so I'm gonna kind of like peek in and like peek my head in the door and look around. All right, three enormous crystal chandeliers brilliantly illuminate this magnificent chamber. Pillars of stone stand against dull white marble walls supporting the ceiling. In the center of the room, a long, heavy table is covered with a fine white satic cloth. The table is laden with many delectable foods. Roasted beasts basted in a savory sauce, roots and herbs of every taste, sweet fruits and vegetables. Places are set for each of you with a fine, delicate china and silver. Each place uh, is it. At each place is a crystal goblet filled with an amber liquid with a delicate tantalizing fragrance. At the center of the far west wall between the floor to ceiling mirrors stands a massive organ. Its pipes blare out a thunderous melody that speaks in its tone of greatness and despair. Seated at the organ facing away from you is a single caped figure pounds the keys in a rapture ecstasy. The figure does not notice you at this time. Does the figure look familiar? Uh, yeah, I was yeah. going to say, what, what yeah. do I see at the figure? Yeah, it just looks like uh, a... Parrot's the only one that sees him right now. Right. Parrot, yeah. you just see someone with just a cape with um, some dark hair. It's hard to make out who he is uh, from this angle. Um... I'm going to wave and just say, Ow. I will, uh, nothing happens when I do that. into the room. All right. So you enter the room first, Parrot? Well, I like stuck. I said hello and waved at the person. Oh, sorry. Did I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that part. Um, so yeah, as soon as you, um, announce yourself, the uh, figure turns around and looks at you, gives a slight bow, and it looks like Strahd, actually. Like the same guy we encountered at the uh, vineyard, yep. Winery? Yep. But the yeah, one who but... punched me into the ground. Yep, but go ahead and roll me an Arcana check. Sure, this will go well. Oh, natural 20. Yeah, you can definitely tell this is an illusion. All right, maintaining composure for now. Do I, can I tell any source, like, where it's coming from? Like, can I see where he's ca casting from or anything? No. Okay. I'm waiting for him to respond. I waved at him and said hello already. Oh, yeah, he just, he's like, welcome. Please have a seat and enjoy the music and eat to your fill.
Um, Quinn, you're in the room, right? Yes. Okay. Did he say sit? Yes. Yes, he did. In the chair. All right. I'm going to come sit in a chair. I'm going to touch it to see if anything happens first and then sit in the chair if nothing does. I dies. Yeah, uh, as you sit in the chair, it has been quite a while since you... For Linden, you have not felt this fine of a velvet and the padding, lumbar support. It's everything that you could want in a chair. I mean, I don't even know what lumbar support is, and it's incredible. <laughs> It'd be so cool if I could actually sit in this chair. Yeah, unfortunately, these tokens don't work on this. All right. Well, um. Oh, we might have to take. I might have to. I might have to take one of these with me. If you would be so kind. No. <laughs> well, I will sit down at the uh, the place before me, and uh, I will just start eating. Same. Yeah. I will uh, sit. As the person who is immune to poison and being poisoned, I'm fine with this. I sit opposite him and do the same. Yeah, I'll join him. I can't believe they're eating. I was just going to sit in this chair. I have advantage in resistance against poison, so I mean, I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> I'll just start eating. Lucy, I don't. I just like to eat. Lucy just starts to think she's not able to actually die. <laughs> Is the illusion of Strahd still, like, yeah, hanging so, out? As you guys are eating, you can tell that he is hitting the climax of the piece that he is playing and you know it's a it's a very sad you know as loud as the sound coming from you can definitely tell that there's a very uh, sad melodic tone to it and as you guys eat um, you can feel that the song is about ready to end within a few you know bars um, I don't eat I want to... You, Parrot, you told us this is an illusion at all, or no? Like, in our heads. Like, did you communicate that to us? Sure. Yeah, I I forgot that was kind of a thing. Yes, we'll say I did, because if I'd remembered it, I would have. Okay. If he says that this person's an illusion, I'm gonna... I want to check to make sure there's nothing illusionary about this food. Okay. Yeah, if you want, you can roll a Kana check. Twenty-three. Yeah, you can actually tell that um, that the food itself was freshly made, and within a, a few hours um, of your time, it's still piping hot. It the meat is still succulent and not dry. You can tell that the dishware and everything that you're using was finely cleaned. So it's definitely real, and it's a lot of effort was put into uh, getting all prepared. Which is amusing, because I don't believe vampires actually eat food. That doesn't necessarily mean that he wouldn't have somebody cook it for us. Yeah, it just no, means he was, he's it just trying means to be gracious. As a host, you have a lovely home, sir. Oh, well, thank you. And with that, the performance has ended. Please enjoy your stay. And the illusion vanishes. And the moment that the figure disappears, a fierce bone-chilling wind rises up and roars through the hall, putting out all open flames. The characters all hear a screech of ancient hinges and the solid thud of many doors slamming shut, one after another into the distance. They also hear a portcullis clanging shut and the tire groan of age of the age drawbridge pulling up. How midday is it by chance, do we know? Uh, midday. Did he just lock us in the castle because we were all foolish enough to believe this? Well, I did believe it. I mean, we were just sitting around them. I thought it was you know I mean this is a comfortable chair.
How long does he intend to keep us here, one has to wonder. You said the know. illusion's gone, right? Yep, the illusion's gone. So all the doors closed, too? Yep, even the ones in here closed. All right, well, I'll get up. And it's only the one entrance or exit that we came in through, yes? Correct. All right, I will uh, try to open the doors back up. Yeah, they actually open up without any with any resistance. But you notice that the um, as you open up the doors, you notice that the areas that you were... <clears throat> that you were just in, all the torches in those areas have also gone out. That's ominous. Um, I'm going to fall out, and I'm just going to start looking around. Okay. We're at this point already, so why not? What? Well, yeah. They could, I guess since we're over here, I want to look at the suit of armor. Yeah, Lyndon, you want to check out the suit of armor? <laughs> <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Yeah, just suit of armor that's just well cared for. Let's go check this door over here, what's going on here. It most likely leads to the chapel he had mentioned. All right, let's take a look here. All right, all right. You need to get some technical questions. Is there a way, like, how do we, is there a better way to navigate this thing? Is it just, is there, so I'm just using my mouse. Is there, like, a, another way to do stuff? AWSD kind of moves, pans the camera left, right, up and down, and then the. Nice. If you use your scroll wheel, the scroll wheel will zoom in and out. No, the WASD was good. That's probably the most helpful tool. Okay. And also, I don't know what kind of keyboard you have or what kind of uh, mouse and setup you have, but if it's easier, the arrow keys will, uh, the up and down will, like, pivot up and down, or pivot, like, in a circle, I guess, is what you'd call it. I don't know. Yeah, I just got a scroll wheel, so. Uh, so there's a door here. Mm -hmm. And then I died. Uh, is there a staircase? What, what's this going on? Yeah, that's a staircase that moves up. Going up? Okay. Yep. So we don't want to... Does it look like it's dramatically going up? Like, does it look like it's going up to another floor? Uh, or is it just like a landing? Yeah, that's actually going up to another floor up 30 feet. Okay. So that is a different floor. So we have a staircase over here, staircase here, or a hallway. Like, we, we saw there's a hallway leading down to a staircase. Yep. Okay. I think we should check this door that's yeah, here. Yeah, it's the only way to go right now. Um, I doubt it's trapped. Uh so. I'll take a look. Is it locked or anything? Or Yep, it's locked currently. Oh, ho, ho! Is that so? What a welcoming door for us, Strad. He did say to check out his chapel, which I don't see. It's... Well, I'll have a look at this door here. Um, gosh, did I? I did. Thieves tools on this for 23. Um... Hold up before you do that. Uh, why don't we just ask him? Cause I would, but here. I can't. All right, yeah, yeah. You, the just a couple of, just a couple of bars, and yeah, get it open, and it clicks open. Hmm. I mean, he said he's we're allowed to walk around the first floor. He's he's the one who decided to lock it. Um. I, I feel I, like lock picking a door is not a good idea right now. 
But well, I guess our, here our, we are. our option is to turn back. Uh, I'm going to do an investigation before we do open the door, though, just to make sure it doesn't have a bomb on it. Uh, so, let's roll that again. Has anyone just tried knocking? That's a 16. Yeah, the door's not booby-trapped. Well, I, I have unlocked the door. If you want to go ahead and knock on it now, it's a lot easier to open. I just mean, like, instead of picking the locks in the place we were invited to... Wait, I thought you just did an investigation check. I did, just to make sure the door wasn't going to blow up. Oh, all right. You said you picked the lock already, and that's why I was confused. Oh, I definitely did that, too. Oh. I picked it before I investigated it. I went backwards. Oh, I see. Okay, good to know. I was, very, I was very trustworthy of the door. I mean, he good, let us sit. Good to know that I was sit. within fireball range of that. Oh, you would have lived. Or you might have died. Probably. Fireball? No. <laughs> All right. I will um. I will lightly knock on the door before opening. Yeah. As yeah. Uh, as you knock on the door, the doors swing open, inward, and uh, ahead of you in this grand hall, choked with dust, stretches into the darkness ahead. Webs hang from the arched ceiling like drapes, and life-size statue of knights line the hallways on both sides. Their eyes seemingly watch you. I'm going to go ahead and cast light on my shield, so so we can see. Okay. And... I will... scooch through everybody staring down the hallway and take the first couple steps in. You know... No. No offense, Lucy, but I do not think you should be in the front. Last time, that went very badly for you. That's very true, but no one else was moving. I was going, and I will take lead. Do not want Lucy dying again. Or near dying. I'm just going to turn off snapping for the moment until we're actually, like, in combat. Yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. Alright. Um, let me do something real quick. I think I have to do... Okay, so I actually have to roll that. I mean, you don't have to. Well, hell. Okay. Now I gotta do this now. Gotta do what now? I gotta do a thing yeah. now. You don't uh, gotta do anything. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to do anything. Alright, uh, what does a 10 do for you guys? Gives us treasure. <laughs> for free. Ma let's us win the game and instantly kill Strahd. Alright, uh, Vika, go ahead and... Make me a uh, acrobatics check. Oh, this will be famous. Oh, fantastic. Must it be acrobatics? I mean, c couldn't it be like, you know, athletics or something? No. Four. All right. Well, broom falls on you. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And nice. Now you have your backup character ready, right? Yeah. Uh, three points of bludgeoning damage. Just as you this happen, it. and point to my shield. <laughs> shield. God damn it! And look up at the ceiling. Where did the broom come from? It was just lodged behind one of the knights. Just got loose. Oh, it fell. So, like, it a broom fell. handle just, like, lightly slipped and smacked me in the face, but managed like to get three points of damage. Like, yeah. it, hit you as hard, it hit you as hard as a goblet. That's incredible. Like, I feel like I'm in, like, the Looney Tunes, and I just, like, stepped on a rake. <laughs> I very much appreciate that reference. <laughs> I mean, if it's any 
deal. I'm, a, I'm actually supposed to deal one four, D4 plus three. I only just did a D4. <laughs> this thing's hard. I'm not sure if that's better or worse. That's right. It hits as hard as a goblin. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, well, I'm well, beginning to believe that uh, I don't want to talk about it anymore. All right. Brooms in this entire fucking country are cursed. <laughs> Brooms are tricky. Fine. And I will keep going down Pove. Alrighty. Grumbling to self about stupid fucking brooms. Make sure everybody is in this hallway before you consider the next room. And yeah. And go ahead and try. Ahead. Go ahead and try the knocking thing. Let's see if that worked. Uh, maybe maybe I was just being. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, leave it to me to being mistrustful of things. All right, I will try knocking on door. Yeah, I mean, you knock on it and. Doors just kind of open up outward. Um, as you stand at the end of this hall, you see above the doors, it hangs a symbol of a beaten bronze that looks like a rising or setting sun. Um, while we're in the hallway, oh, well, at least while I'm in the hallway, <clears throat> besides the statues looking, do I notice anything like up high? Nah, just some cobwebs. Okay. Aha, so they didn't make this place look good for us. They're not good at dusting. You'd think if he knew he was going to have gas, he'd dust a little bit. Does this symbol mean anything to anyone? I can what check this, it out. What, this anime person holding a gun over here? What? Oh, you can turn that off. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's uh, people's steam portraits. It's in the middle of the thing because the table is bigger than is normal. Would I be able to recognize it? Yeah, you can roll me a religion check. I'll get in on that action. Dirty 20. Mine's a 14. Yeah, both of you just realize that that's probably a, um, a effigy to the Morning Lord. That's for the Morning Lord, which is a little surprising. It is odd to think of Temple of the Rising Sun in... The castle of vampire, yes? Yes. It's certainly ironic. Isn't it? Don't you think? It's like rain. But it is on your very... Okay, I'm not doing it. Yeah. Um... <laughs> All right, so doors have opened up, and I enter. Follow suit. Let me just double check here. Oh, okay. Oh, there are two different eyes. Okay. All right, so as you guys uh, get to the door and knock on it, it opens up. Dim colored light filters through the tall, broken, and boarded up windows of stained glass, illuminating the ancient chapel of Ravenloft. A few bats flutter near. Uh, sorry, a few bats flutter about the near top of the 29-foot-high dome ceiling. A balcony runs the length of the west wall, uh, 50 feet above the floor. In the center of the balcony, two dark shapes are slumped in tall chairs. Benches coated with centuries of dust lie about the floor in jumbled disarray. Beyond the debris, lit by a piercing shaft of light, an altar stands upon a stone platform. The sides of the altar are carved with a bas reliefs of angelic figurines entwined with grape vines. The light from above falls directly on a silver statuette. A cloaked figure is draped over the altar. A black mace lies on the floor near its feet.
So there is a silver statue. What is the silver statue of? Uh, it says here that it is just a. It depicts a cleric kneeling in supplication. Did and you there's say there's a... a there's a figure on the altar? Yep. No. Yep. It says a figure slumped on the altar. I'm not falling for it this time. So is it like when you say slumped, is it like lying on the altar or kneeling near the altar? No, no, no. It's like. It's like something, it's like the figure killed over and half of it's lying on top of the altar. Does it look familiar? No. Are you okay over there on the altar? No reply. You okay. strange person. I will go and investigate it. Alright, yeah, yeah, just see, uh, Human male and dead. And it is not a person that I recognize from anything. Nope. Uh, I want to sift through the benches and kind of see if there's anything. And there is a mace on the ground, yes? Yep, black mace. <clears throat> in, in what fashion is this person dead? Vika, can you have a good look at the body, or is there? How did this person die? Is there uh, bite wounds and such? I don't know. DM, are there bite wounds and such? Nope. It looks like that this man just kind of peacefully died in his sleep. It looks like he just stopped blazing. But does he look like? Oh, I'll just come over and look. So is he like really old and stuff? Yeah, he looks he looks like in probably for a point of reference, he's probably closer to like late forties, early fifties. But is his body all emaciated like has it been sitting here for a long time? Uh his body looks kinda Hi. like it's decayed for like maybe a week or two at best. How long have we been here? <laughs> God, uh it was it been two, three, four weeks. Five days. Five <laughs> No Longer idea. than five days. A month at least. Is there a crest or anything heraldry on this person? No. So it's just some schmuck. Yep. Hmm. Well, I'm sure there's something significant about this person. Does anyone with knowledge of magic or faith, uh, I mean, could this be part of some sort of ritual, or did he die in non-natural death? Is there anything arcana-y that I could glean from this? Yep. And I was going to ask if I could tell, like, how he died, like, with the medicine check. Ooh, dirty 20. Yeah, you can definitely tell that there is a massive aura around the uh, silver statue. How long are we going to be uh, investigating all of this? Well, I don't... I mean, there isn't much more to do on this floor. Although I do see a doorway going this way. Just as a reminder, if we leave floors and we... Sacrifice our protection. Well, if there's nothing to do on the first floor, there's nothing for us to do here. We could try to negotiate for uh, broader uh, liberties to explore the castle. All right, well, I am going to place my hands on the uh, statue. Does it do anything? All right. You touch the statue. Yep. Where's the statue at? It was on the altar. Oh, it's on the altar. Okay. All right. So as you grab it, you actually feel a, a sense of security and protection uh, come over you as if thing, you're going to be okay. Things are going to be all right. Things are going to be all right, guys. 
what happened to Quinn? And that's it? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, I'm going to use one of my newfound abilities, and I'm going to spend the next uh, 11 minutes, and as a ritual, I will be casting the Identify spell hey. on it. Hey. Yeah, we were supposed to identify a couple of things. We have the axe and a spell scroll that we forgot yeah, to Yeah, now do, that like, Quinn can identify rest. things. <laughs> Whoops. Nice. I'm going to sit in one of these pews for 11 minutes. All right, so Lucy, from your medical check, you can tell that this poor soul uh, ended up touching the statue, and uh, you can tell that his hand was slightly charged, uh, not charged, but charred, as if something, you know, kind of burned into him quite a bit, like a large amount of energy got transferred into him. So he touched the statue, and energy went into him? Yep. I look at Quinn, who just touched the statue. What? You feeling all right there, buddy? I'm feeling great. <laughs> um, I don't think I've ever seen Quinn quite so, um... Not uptight? There might be something wrong. <laughs> don't touch the statue. It's what killed this poor man. All right. Anything else going on while Quinn is uh, checking this thing out? Can I pick up the mace? Sure. Anything funny about it? You, you feel a sense of terror flood through you, and although it doesn't frighten you, you can definitely tell that this weapon was made to scare your enemies away. Um, I'm going to set the mace thing. back down in front of Vika. Um, is there a reason you're handing me frightening mace? It's very scary. Alright, um, I suppose I will pick it up and add it to pack of things that we need Quinn to look at later. Also, I wonder if this is technically stealing. Uh, perhaps uh, not take. I put it back down. What if instead of stealing, we just borrow it until Quinn can look at it, and then we give it back? Straw, do you mind if we borrow the mace? He, you hear a voice, but it's like, oh, that does not belong to me. Do what you will with it. Oh, okay. Hello, thank you. I did not expect him to answer. <laughs> That's kind of upsetting. <laughs> what, the fact is that he is watching us as we wander through his home and rifles through his belongings. And talk about him like he's not here. And talk about breaking the rules that he has set. You guys, I'm focusing. Alright, anything else happening while Quinn is uh, identifying this item? Um... I am contemplating how to approach these. Um, Lord Von Zorovich, I ask for your permission to further uh, explore this um, magnificent castle you call home. Uh, I have heard wonders of your uh, your wine cellar. Uh, you probably have discovered uh, long ago when your servant your servant visited my village that um, my family run tavern and I have great interest in um, fine vines and um, 
strong spirits. I ask your permission to enter your larders and uh, vine cellar to learn of your collection. Throw me a your persuasion. All right. Uh, where is persuasion? There. I'm gonna roll like a natural one. Oh god, it was close. That was a. I know that was a nine. These dice just. That looks like a two on these dice. Fifteen. Fifteen. I shall permit you to visit the wine cellar. However, if you select something that is. How can I put it? Of high class, your protection will be forfeit. Your generosity is uh, greatly appreciated. Ask him where the fuck it is. <laughs> um, which direction is most expedient to discover uh, the vine cellar? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, let's see here. Does K-21 take you down there? No, we need to get you guys down to... The hell is the best way to get down here? Alright, let's see here. K-64. Ah, okay. So that might be your best bet. Where? Uh, he instructs you to... God, is that really not... Let me double check here on this thing. There's... Uh, let me see here. Oh. Oh, that doesn't do you guys any good. Uh, is there any other way to get down to K64? No, that takes you... Path 12. Nope. Nope and nope. Wow, that's really the only way down there? All right. He, uh... He <clears throat> in order to get there quick, you must find your way through music. That's the only help I will give you. Find our way with music, he said? Yep. Okay. You know, no, I, I'm fairly curious about something, my lord. Um, you knowing what you know about us, and us knowing about what we know about you... Do you worship the Morning Lord? There's no reply. Of course. Alright, that should be enough time. Hey, so after spending the amount of time needed, <clears throat> Quinn, you end up finding out that this item is a icon of Ravenloft. Ooh. So essentially, while 30 feet of this icon, a creature under this effect of protection from evil and good spell against fiends and undead. Only creature attuned to the icon can use other properties. So. Like, the, it's the armor or the mace? Uh, it's a statue. Wait, there was armor too. No, the the armor is the stat. I'm sorry, it was like oh, a okay. silver. Yeah, gotcha, I gotcha. thought it was like a silver armor statue. That's my bad. Gotcha. Okay. Um. Okay. So um. Okay, so it's a 12-inch tall silver statue that 
while within 30 feet of it, a, any creature. A creature. Uh, a, is, creature. a creature. Yep. A is, well, within 30 feet of the icon, a creature under the effect of a protection from evil or good spell against fiends or undead. Uh, only a creature attuned to the icon can use other properties. So, uh, was it like a tall data attuned to an item in this one? Does it require attunement by a specific class or race or alignment? alignment? A creature of good alignment. Um, okay. So is there anyone of particularly good heart who uh, might be able to put this, this to good use? What? Aren't we all of good heart here? One would think. I think some more than others. I'll roll my eyes and hold out my hand. Oh, it says you only have to spend a short rest to attune to it. Okay. Yeah, that's the way attunement usually works. Yep. Alright, well, what you're doing is that, Quinn, I negotiated for permission to enter the wine cellar. Um, this permission came with, um, guide, uh, a hint for us to find our way, uh, below, uh, was just, uh, the way is through music. Yeah, I bet there's like a, you know, handy dandy code on the, uh, the organ out there or something like that, you know. Or perhaps some sort of um, hidden door or something near it, or unless there is a music room of some kind. Well, the only music thing that I think we saw on this first floor was the organ in the dining room, so we can go have a look out there. I'm just going to start scurrying down the hall towards the organ room. Um, there's a hall hallway here yep um two statues they try to kill me yet no and then there's just like a little staircase that goes down here yep so that one takes you downstairs as well And just done what? What's in this room? Um, which room are we talking about? The oh, that's there's like a brick room. wall. Gotcha. Um, let's see here. That is oh, K sixteen. Okay. So arched in uh, this arch room connects to a vast chamber to the east and a staircase that rises to the west. Alcoves in the north and south walls hold eight foot tall sculptures of Hellenid knights with muscular builds. Black shadows fall across their faces. Okay. So the thing in front is a staircase? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just making sure we are completely locked in right now. All right, so it's time to go and explore a room with organ and yes. examine organ. Yeah, let's take a look around All at right. the organ. Yep, I will help him. Yeah, I have plus eight on this still. So if I'm helping you, then with advantage. All right, perception yeah. rules. Perception. Oh, you want perception or, or investigation? Yes, perception. Uh, I'll just roll my perception and you know. Oof. Ooh, I get a reroll. Yay, halfling. Twenty-three. Fifteen. 
the one time that a person is happy to roll a natural one. <laughs> so, oh, that's everyone then? Sorry, I didn't hear everyone roll. Alright, so... Uh, people who rolled over a 20, you notice that there are scratch marks on the floor that suggest that the organ can be slid outward. All right, well, Vika, Matilda, would you be able to try and uh, slide this organ outward? It looks like it does move, but I don't know if there's like a trick to it. Sure. Um, I look at the... Uh, what was that? I said we can give it a try. Yeah, I, I look down at the uh, scratch marks and look for, like, directions that organ should be moved. Yep. And uh, give it a light push. I do not want to go too hard and break anything. All right, well, you both can give me a good old uh, athletics check. Athletics. Oh, come on. That's my second to one at all. <laughs> and there is a Tilda over there rolling like... a 24. <laughs> uh, Tilda, you feel that it should be moving, but instead of actually moving, you break off a small piece of, uh, of a pipe. Oh, shit. Oh, just sheer terror goes across my face. That was what I was worried about. Oh, he didn't this... push that hard. All right, is is okay. Um, I I can I can fix this. Um, I try to repair the pipe. Okay. <laughs> Look, if I've learned things over the for, over the past uh few days and with my communing with uh, my leakies that sometimes you just have to give things the right touch and I will cast mending on it. <laughs> oh, I'm good. What are you like? Uh, you, get, you get spell casting at level 8? No. no I, I, level, I took a level in cleric. Oh... That's why he was trying to bring up like the whole my leaky thing and stuff more often. Yes, yes. I really. Yes, I took a level little, of cleric little, in the forge wacky, domain. Little wacky multi class at level eight. I have my reasons. <laughs> it's sure. because he was tired of being the only one in the group that can't deal damage to things. So I took a level in forge cleric, which allows me to bless my weapon with a to make it magical. <laughs> I mean, it works. Plus, I can heal and, you know, do other things, so. It's nice. Yeah, so if we yeah, lose no, Lucy, it's, it's like, right away. Yeah, no, it's fine. I, 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 I'm not, I'm just, that's good. That's hilarious. I just want to hit level 9 so I can take Sharpshooter with my next feet, and then I'll be, like, super ready. All right. Um. So there is must be some sort of trick to this. Um. Someone with sharper eyes want to look. So perhaps... so what happened? You tried to move it and it didn't move. And uh, it kind of broke a little it bit. It sort of broke right. a little bit. Just a um, little. Sal, I would um. So he was playing music earlier. Or there was music playing earlier. Um, I, I don't know. What do I need to roll to try to recall and maybe figure out how to play that? I think, honestly, Parrot would probably be the best because he's probably pretty good at mimicking things. Yeah, we could I give it a shot. Much. Yeah, you guys, someone can roll me a performance check. It's fine. I'm down. I, uh, I'm very give him his though. token back before he goes... I will cast that only works on saving throws, by the way. What was that? That only works on saving throws. Oh, I thought it was ability checks. 
pretty sure it's only saving throws, but I'll double check really quick. But, but uh, my, I can guess, look it up my guess is it. my guess is it might be the song he was playing earlier. Um, if the if you could get some help from the divine blessings or something I, of that nature, I will. I, I I'm gonna cast guidance. <laughs> okay. Fuck. I hate these dice. I'm Can you roll a natural bad. two? And a one. I mean, is anyone helping him? I was gonna look. It's like a. Any... I feel like playing piano. Well, I don't know. It could be a two-person job. Ever play Heart and Soul? Hmm. I'm more partial to the Moonlight Sonata. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you play Heart and Soul on this organ. Don't say that. It we is an lose. ability check, by the way. So we, oh, okay. we will lose our. So yeah, I gave we... you the token back, so you can use that too. I'm assuming an eight fails. Did you add your other D4? Didn't you also get guidance? That's for guidance. I rolled a seven and a one. And I told you I gave oh, you sorry. the. Uh... I rolled a two with a plus five. You rolled modifier, a two and then and a, then one. a one. And then I gave you the token back, which is another D4. Yeah, go ahead and add that D4. I mean, you never know. That's what eleven now. Eleven. Yeah. Hey, yeah. it's over ten. Yeah, parrot. You know, kind of just goes through, and as he uh, presses one of the levers down on the organ. It's a little stiff, but you're able to push it just enough, and the organ, you know, moves outward towards you and slides to the left. Cha-cha now. Real smooth. Yeah. Oh. So it was just it was just one key? It had nothing to do with the song that he played? No, no, it, it still did, but mostly that was pedal work that needed to be done. Hmm. Alrighty. Alright, so yeah. So yeah, so this area behind the behind the piano opens up. All right, we're in area eleven. All right, the castle courtyard is visible through the arrow slits in the north and west walls. Leaning against the walls are mirrors of various sizes, some as tall as humans, some small enough to fit in a backpack. Don't look in the chest. Why not look in chest? Because we're... He got re he's really picky about the wine we're going to take from him. This is true. <laughs> Alright, so what's here? We got a staircase going up to the parapet. Yeah. And then there's a hallway over here. Yep. I'm looking in one of the mirrors. Oh no. And that's how Lucy died. That's where we're going to end the game tonight. <laughs> All right. Lucy, go and roll me a, uh, a wisdom saving throw, please. And 23. Yeah, you're fine. Does it look any different, or is it just a mirror? No, just a mirror to you. Nothing, nothing crazy. What's up in this hallway over here? All right. That's section thirteen. All right. So in section thirteen, it's just a long, narrow corridor that runs east to west. Cobwebs fill the hall, obstructing sight beyond a few feet. Oh, there's some cobwebs over here. Uh, does anybody want to clear these out for me? Um, sir, oh. I will go and pull out my glaive and start attacking through them. Okay. Sorry, Parrot. I think perhaps lighting things on fire in these places is not a good idea. <laughs> I think you can keep it measured. Yet. That's you assuming that I was going to do that, but okay. Oh, I mean, maybe not. If I was him, I totally would have. Yeah, I mean, under ordinary circumstances, I would totally do that. 
Well, actually, legitimately wasn't planning on that. Oh, if if you have ideas, then please. Okay. I'm going to cast Mage Hand and just kind of, like, sweep the cobwebs away. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anything weird? No. Okay. No, just... I will step aside and kind of, like, bow, letting him forward. Nope, just extremely dusty and, uh, extremely dusty and a lot of webs. All right. Just out of curiosity, do they, like, do they seem like they're fairly fresh and super sticky or kind of old and dusty? Old and dusty. Okay. Um, all right, so up here there's a staircase. It looks like it's going down slightly. Oh, yeah, so... Let me double check here because that should take you guys all the way down to. Yep. So, yeah, that takes you quite a ways down, actually. Let me just double check here, but I believe they said that that's a 40 foot, uh, sorry, 40 feet down, uh, down the stairway to the next level. Okay. So it looks like there's a staircase going down over there. Do you see a staircase uh, over there by any chance? The tower, the parapet has, a, has something going up. I don't know if they had something going down, though. Uh, let me double check, but... 12? No, it's just a, uh, where Vika's person is. Oh, are you talking about where you're at, the stairway going up? Uh, I'm talking about the tower over here. Is that just a... Uh... Yeah, that's just a, a turret post. Just a high okay. dome ceiling caps a 30-foot wide octagonal room before you. The frescoes faded with age adorn the ceiling, but their images are impossible to make out. Thin, or sorry, tall, thin arrow slits look over the courtyard. Okay. Um, yeah, I just tell uh, people psychically that, you know, there's a staircase going down. This might be the one that we're supposed to use. I just want to make sure there isn't another staircase. Because this could be a really good trick for him to uh, basically trick us. So. I'm going to say to you, why don't you just ask him? <laughs> I don't do that. I literally can't ask questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, is leading us down and was led here by music. It seems probable this is the right pass. Yeah, we should go down. Okay, and with that, we'll end there for tonight. Because that's going to be another whole section. So, alright, we made it through first part of Castle Ravenloft. We'll see how further you go before you Irk, irk the master of the home, and I think we're all good for next week, right? No one have any plans or conflicts? As far as I know. Okay. Should be good. Alright guys, well we're going to end the stream there for tonight. Thanks for hanging out, and hopefully we'll see you back here for another D&D &D session next week. Take care.